Welcome to today's edition of the Exploring Mining Podcast, featuring stock news from TSX, TSXV, CSE, ASX, NASDAQ, and New York Stock Exchange mining companies, plus interviews with CEOs and leading experts. Hello everyone, this is Sam Mowers here. Welcome to the latest episode of the Exploring Mining Podcast. For news today, we've got the latest from Denison Mines, Trilogy Metals, Kuya Silver, and Lancaster Resources. But just before we get into the show today, a quick reminder that if you enjoy this podcast, please feel free to share it or even leave us a review. And as always, I recommend checking out some of the other podcasts on InvestorIdeas.com. Some of these include the Cannabis Podcast, the Clean Tech and Climate Change Podcast, and there's many others, all of which will bring you up to speed on the latest stock news and trends in their respective spaces. Right, so Denison Mines Corp., which trades on the NYSE American under the ticker symbol DNN, has announced the signing of a shared prosperity agreement with English River First Nation or ERFN, supporting the development and operation of Denison's Wheeler River Project in northern Saskatchewan, Canada. The ERFN's acting chief, Jenny Wolverine, explained, quote, Together we built a strong deal for the nation. We are confident that based on the size of the project and current best practices, we have one of the best agreements in the entire country. As a nation, we are now turning our attention to building our capacity for employment and training, so we are ready for the Wheeler River project and the full implementation of this important partnership. End quote. Stock for Denison Mines is down 0.3% at the time of recording. Next up, Trilogy Metals Inc., which trades on the NYSE American under the ticker TMQ has posted an exploration update on its 100% owned projects in northern Alaska. According to the press release, stream sediment and rock sampling has outlined two target areas prospective for volcanogenic massive sulfide or VMS and shale-hosted zinc deposits at the Help Me Jack project in the eastern part of the Ambler Schist Belt. Richard Goss, the company's VP of Exploration, said, quote, the enrichments found in these stream sediments cannot be dismissed as metal scavenging and are thought to reflect the presence of zinc sulfide mineralization. Stream sediment geochemistry is the most cost-effective regional exploration method in the Ambler Schist Belt and was the method that led to the discovery of the Arctic VMS deposit. Recommended follow-up work at Help Me Jack includes ridge and spur soil sampling along with mapping and rock sampling a low-cost program to find and evaluate the source of the zinc in the stream sediments. End quote. Stock for Trilogy Metals is down 2.03% at the time of recording. Next up, Kuya Silver Corporation, which trades on the CSE under the ticker KUYA, has announced an update on drilling at the Silver Kings project in Canada. This drilling is a follow-up from the project's Campbell-Crawford target, where earlier grassroots drilling intersected significant silver and cobalt mineralization, 15,372 grams per ton of silver, 0.08% cobalt over 3.34 meters, both with uses in renewable energy, by the way. David Lewis, the company's VP of Exploration, said, quote, Follow-up drilling at our Canadian Campbell and Crawford target is set to test the vertical and lateral extent of the grassroots Angus vein discovery at depth in the ideal silver cobalt mineralized zone. We also exposed two other nearby veins on surface with similar untested silver and cobalt potential at depth, and all three of these veins are in close proximity and on a similar scale to major historic mines in cobalt. End quote. Stock for Kuya Silver is down 4.76% at the time of recording. Lastly, for today, Lancaster Resources, Inc., trading on the CSE under the ticker LCR, has submitted applications to the State of New Mexico Energy, Mines, and Natural Resource Department and Bureau of Land Management to drill up to three wells targeting both shallow and deep conductive layers on its Alkali Flat Lithium Brine Project in New Mexico. 
Andrew Watson, the company's VP of Operations and Engineering, said, quote, The identified targets show clear opportunities for large aquifers containing concentrated lithium brine. We are expecting our first drill hole to allow us to collect brine samples, along with rock cuttings or core, from targeted intervals allowing us to determine the concentration of lithium and other minerals. End quote. Stock for Lancaster Resources is down 10% at the time of recording. Well, that does it for today's Exploring Mining podcast. If you'd like to be a guest or sponsor for this podcast, please contact InvestorIdeas.com. InvestorIdeas.com reminds all listeners to read our disclaimers and disclosures on the InvestorIdeas.com website. All investment involves risk, and this podcast is not meant to be an endorsement to buy or sell securities or products. To hear more InvestorIdeas.com podcasts, please visit InvestorIdeas.com slash audio. And a reminder, you can also hear our podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Audible, Spotify, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spreaker.com, iHeartRadio, and most audio platforms available.